in previous sessions, I've been talking about the characteristics or the attributes of God. And remember, we put these in two categories. His, his uh, communicable attributes are the things that he can share with humanity. Things like love and justice and, and mercy. His incommunicable attributes are things like his omnipotence, his omniscience, his omnipresence, his aseity. There's one attribute of God that in some ways you could say it's incommunicable. In another way, you can say, no, he, he shares that with humanity. And that is his primary characteristic. The one attribute of God that is more important than all is his holiness. Everything else about God flows out of his holiness. Now, in one sense, his holiness <clears throat> is completely his and incommunicable in the sense that uh, we who are uh, humans can never share in his perfect holiness. Throughout eternity, even when I will be completely sanctified, I'm still always going to have a sinful past, right? The nail prints in the hands of Jesus will always bear witness about my past. Now, every tear will be wiped from my eye. I'm not going to live in regret for all of eternity looking back on that because uh, we'll be completely satisfied in Jesus. But the wounds of Christ, the scars will bear witness that I was a sinner. So I will never be completely holy like God is holy. Even the angels that did not fall are holy angels, but their holiness emanates from God. They live in the realm of God and they are not infinitely holy because they're not holy before their creation. So even their holiness still comes from God in a sense. So there's, there's a sense in which we can't share that perfect holiness of God. Of course, in another sense, we can because we are invited into relationship with him through Jesus Christ, who is perfectly holy. And we're commanded, be ye holy, even as I am holy. Well, uh, this is what sanctification is. When I repented of my sins, put my faith and trust in Christ alone, the Holy Spirit took up residence in me and sanctification is the process by which the Holy Spirit is making me more and more like Jesus. And the Bible says that I am destined to be conformed to the image of his dear son. So holiness is the ultimate goal and destiny of my life. In eternity, uh, I'm gonna be like him because I'm gonna see him as he is. When you think about the holiness of God, it's really remarkable the way God has revealed himself. This, this is what separates God from all other false gods. You think about the Israelites in the middle of the ancient Near East and the, the false gods around them like uh, Baal, or Astarte, Ashtaroth, I mean, these, these different gods that were worshiped by other Near Eastern peoples, uh, man, they, they were celebrated for sexuality, for fertility. You see this in ancient Canaanite statuary, uh, the, the, the statues themselves of these false gods always emphasize things like genitalia. And in the middle of all that, all the way around them, here comes a, a people and the God they worship. First of all, they worship just one God, not many. Uh, they're monotheist. And his primary characteristic is he's holy. Now, where else in the ancient world do you ever see that? Uh, that testimony of the holiness of God, which is so contrary to the nature of humanity, in my mind is one of the greatest evidences for the reality of this God because nothing in humanity wants to worship a God who is holy. We, we want to worship gods who are powerful. Think about the gods of Olympus uh, in Greece and later in Rome. Uh, they, they were powerful. They had 
you know, sort of superpowers. That's what humans are all about. We're about power and uh, sexuality, those things that are celebrated, temple prostitutes. I mean, you find that religions the world over. Where do you find a God whose primary characteristic is that he's holy, that he loves holiness? Only the God of the Bible. And God revealed himself as holy. He revealed himself to Abraham as holy. Remember in Exodus chapter three at the, uh, the passage, remember Jesus said uh, the passage about the bush, God's first thing, take off your shoes because the ground you're standing on is holy ground. And this is God's primary characteristic. God is love because he loves his holiness. God is merciful because he has to find a way to show mercy to his creatures even when they violate his holiness. Uh, everything God does is about his holiness. And praise God, he's devised a way by which we can participate in that, that holiness, not through our own righteousness, but through what Christ has done for us on Calvary by putting away our sin, the handwriting of ordinances that was against us, and sharing with us that which is his primary attribute. And he makes us like him through sanctification, ultimately through glorification. And we will spend eternity enjoying and basking in the holiness of God.